In this video, we're gonna talk about how you grade vlog footage super easily. The reason you shoot like this is so that you get more dynamic range, which means in your footage, the skies aren't blowing out, the blacks aren't getting completely crushed, and you can grade it later and put your own look on it. However, the downside is it takes time to grade a log file. And sometimes we just want to go quick because we have a lot of footage to deal with and we don't necessarily need to spend so much time grading each individual shot for a long time. So I have a few tips on how you can grade your footage super fast and still make it look really good. Now there's a couple elements that you need to understand to be able to grade log footage. The first you need to understand what a LUT is. Second, we're gonna talk about the scopes that you use so you can see your exposure. And third, we're gonna talk about the curves so you can get your footage looking good. So when you're dealing with log footage, there's generally a LUT that allows you to transfer your footage from log to Rec. 709. And what Rec. 709 is basically your base. And that is like the standard across movies and television. Rec. 709 is the color that you want to achieve and start at when you start grading to create a look. If you start grading with footage that has a color cast already on it or a look already on it, you're not starting from zero. So basically Rec. 709 is like your zero. So what you're gonna do is go to your manufacturer website of the camera that you have that you're using. For me, it's Panasonic GH5, and there's actually a LUT that they have on their website that goes from log to Rec. 709, specifically for the GH5. And the reason you want to go to your manufacturer's website to find this is that each camera shoots log differently, and each camera has a different color profile. And Rec. 709 is supposed to be standardized across all cameras. That is just like the baseline for every camera. So what you're doing is you're bringing your log and you're getting your colors to match what is the standard. So what you're gonna wanna do is apply this. I'm using Final Cut X, and to do that, there is a specific plugin called Custom LUT. I'm gonna bring that in. I'm going to add my LUT to the footage, and there you go, that's it. That's the first bit, is you're basically just changing the color of the log footage to Rec. 709. Now, what happens here is that with the GH5, I still need to go in and do more tweaking, and you're probably gonna have to go in and do more tweaking with your footage as well. So what you're gonna wanna do is bring up your curves, and you're gonna wanna bring up your Luma waveform. So on Final Cut X, it's super easy. You hit Command-7, and it pops up with your scopes. With the menu settings in the top right corner, you can click down, you can find Luma, waveforms, and make sure that's full screen. So now what you have in your editing software is your Luma waveform and you have your footage. And so what a waveform actually is when you're looking at Luma is all your exposures from zero to 100. It actually shows beyond zero to 100, but zero is black and 100 is white. And you'll see that when you take off the LUT, you're gonna have footage that's in the middle because log footage is very flat. So your LUT is gonna change some of the colors, it's gonna add some contrast to it, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is now go in using curves, and this tool is native in Final Cut X now, but you're gonna to wanna to bring your highlights in and your blacks in until parts of the waveform are touching the top and the bottom. And you obviously are gonna tweak this to what looks best for you and your footage, but you're basically stretching your exposure, which is creating contrast, and you're stretching all the exposure values in your image so that you're telling what is white and what is black. And you could see this visually as you pull your curves inward, you'll see it on the scopes being stretched outwards to zero and 100. So the last thing you're gonna wanna do is add a little S curve to this. You get that more cinematic look when you add a little bit more of an S curve. It brings down your darks a little bit, brings up your highlights, and all of this is up to you to figure out what you like best. You might ask, well, why can't I just go in, do the curves and add saturation? Well, that is one way that you can do it, but let me show you what the difference is. So with V-Log footage in particular, if I go in and just do the curves using my waveform scopes, you could see I can get my contrast to where it needs to be. Now the image is still flat, so I can go in and add the saturation. But what happens is when you compare these two clips side by side, the footage that I didn't use the Rec. 709 LUT on has a different color to it than the one with the Rec. 709. It's a little bit more yellow, so, and the skin tones don't look as natural. So that's one thing you gotta keep in mind, by just pulling up your saturation, it's not necessarily correcting the file. You might be adding some colors in there that you don't necessarily want. And the idea is that we're getting to Rec. 709 because that's like baseline. That's what you could start anything from. From here, you would go through and start color grading. Maybe you have a specific look that you're going for, and then what you'll do is add on that look now, and that's when you can create these cool 
effects that are more cinematic. But what you need to understand is just getting it to Rec. 709 because that's like the baseline, that's when your footage looks good. But you might just use the footage right here because this is natural looking. All right guys, that is a very quick way you can go through and edit your log footage and get it to Rec. 709, which looks really good and I think is a great place to start. A lot of times I'll just do this, but you could definitely use the footage from here and I like using log because you get more dynamic range, your skies don't blow out, your blacks don't get crushed immediately, you can get a cool look, and you can define where you want your blacks and your whites to sit so that your image has more depth and it has more of that cinematic quality. All right guys, that is it. If you're new to this channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There's a lot of awesome filmmaking tutorials. I've got some camera reviews, some vlogs. Also, if you're new here, I do have an online creator film school that goes through beginning to end everything that you need to know to have a career as a filmmaker or a creator. So guys, I suggest you go check that out down in the description. And that is it. I will see you on the next one.